Okay, the feedback this year has been fantastic, folks. And um, and the message back is that uh, Women in the Media in Ballygonian is a unique event. And uh, because I think, firstly, it's in Ballygonian as well, uh, the fact it's been held outside of Dublin and all you people have decided to take the time out of your busy schedules to come to join us. And uh, we do really appreciate that. And we have managed to attract, sorry, I'm a short person, girls, and so I'm struggling here. Uh, we have managed to attract some of the most powerful and inspirational women in both women and politics here. Testament to that uh, this weekend is the fact that we have the only two women who have held the position of Tonishta in Ballywanya, in Kikulis, and here today. And they have been fantastic uh, just to sit and chat to them over the weekend and uh, also in their uh, public addresses and whatever. So I really appreciate the fact that Mary Hardy and Joan Burton took the time out to come to us again. As we said, Kilcoolies can be a very uh, dangerous place to come into. And about five years ago, uh, unwittingly, on a Sunday afternoon, Mary Harney dropped in for what she thought was going to be a very le leisurely Sunday lunch. And anyone who sat to knows me now, I don't really miss too many opportunities for can at all. And I sat in with her and I decided to pick her brains. And it was five years ago that I first aired the idea of women into media to Mary Harney and, uh, while she was having her lunch. Now, obviously, she thought it was a great idea, and uh, she ag willingly agreed to come along and support us in whatever way she uh, could. So last year, she delivered the opening address, and this year, she has agreed to close what has been, I said already, a fantastic <laughs> weekend. The problem for me is, now I need to find a job for next year to ensure that she'll come back to us. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, Mary Harley. Um, thank you very much, Joe. The wonderful thing about this event, and I think after four years it's a time to reflect on the event, the child is now about to go to school. Where do you go next? And Joan has taken us on a journey. Um, and I think the wonderful thing about it is it allows, obviously, people to listen to very inspirational speeches and debates. I think Billy Keane should definitely be on a panel next year because uh, we need to challenge some of the things that are said. Uh, I'm not a fan of people complaining about the way things are. I'm more in the spirit of, let's try and change them. Because leadership is the responsibility of all of us, and it belongs to those that take it. Um, and when Mil Olivia last night painted the picture of the landscape for women uh, when Mary Marr began as a journalist in Ireland, I'd actually forgotten a lot of that. Sometimes we take for granted uh, the change that has occurred in this small country, and it's been immense. In recent years, um, I've had an opportunity to belong to the board of an organisation called Vital Voices. And our remit really is to motivate and inspire women in leadership around the world, particularly in the developing world. Because today, 70% of the people that live on a dollar a day are women. Women make up the majority of the poor and uneducated. In the wonderful book Half the Sky by Cheryl Goudon and her husband Nick Christophe, they say that more women have died in the last 50 years in the world because they're women than all the combatants that died in 20th century wars. Just think about it. We have female infanticide, we have um, rape as tools of war and, and domestic violence, we have child marriages and so on. It's, it's, it's quite frightening. And when I went into Leinster House first in 1977, I wasn't conscious uh, so much that I was a woman there and there weren't many. In fact, all of the women TDs were there by virtue of inheritance rather than in their own right. They were either widows or daughters of previous male holders of the doll seats. But I was very conscious that I was very young and I remember thinking, my God, they're ancient. What am I doing in here? <laughs> and uh, the average age was probably younger than I am now. Um, but that's the way you think as a young person. I was very conscious of being very young. And one of the wonderful things about this weekend is that it gives an opportunity for people from another generation in politics and in the media to meet with an older generation and vice versa. Uh, I got the opportunity to meet for the first time Una Mullally. I have never met her before, but during the referendum I was so inspired by her contribution, as many people were. She was absolutely terrific. And you don't get those opportunities except here in Ballybunion. I think it's fantastic because unlike most conferences where people come, deliver their speech and go, everybody stays around 
Uh, it's very sociable, it's very relaxed, it's in a holiday spirit, and Joan always manages to deliver the most amazing weather. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I think it's really special. Um, and I look forward to continuing to come. I don't have, Joan said, will you speak on the political panel? I made up my mind many years ago um, that when you leave whatever career you've been in, you leave it to those that are there and you don't start voicing your opinions about political matters. And I, I, I intend to stick with that because I think it's important. The complexities of politics today are immense and unfortunately the general election has thrown up uh, a very interesting scenario um, and we may well slide in perhaps to another election without even realising it, but I certainly hope we can form a government pretty soon because I think it is important. It's important for the country, uh, it's important for our democracy, it's important for Ireland's reputation. Um, it must be very difficult at the moment for the IDA to encourage investment into Ireland because one of the first questions is often about the government and the future economic policy and so on. So I wish them well. And I think it's terrific that Joan Burton spent the whole weekend here notwithstanding the pressures of office and the pressures of seeking uh, to put a new government in place. But the, the last panel here, the, the women in sport, I'm probably the last person that should be asked to close the conference after the women in sport. Um, I live in a house that's Munster Rugby and after last night's match maybe we'll be able to watch something else. Um, but um, you, you mentioned uh, Stephanie Roach, Sue, and um, and the importance of role models, because you said when young girls come they want her autograph. And I think role models, whether it's in sport, or whether it's in business, or whether it's in politics, are incredibly important. And in recent years I've been helping a group called Women for Election, two wonderful young women who started, a, I suppose, a, a social entrepreneurship project funded by the Guinness Foundation of encouraging women to get involved in politics. And essentially it's trying to equip them with skills in communication, Canva, how to canvas, how to fundraise and so on. And I've spoken at a number of their events and a number of their training events. And you meet amazing people. Some of them ran for elections, some of them didn't. I think 40% of the people, new women that got elected had been on their programmes. And now we have 22% of the doll is female. It's still very low. But 30% of the candidates were female and 26% of the voters gave their number one vote to a woman. And amazingly in Dunleary it was 61%. So the landscape, landscape is changing, but very often we have to encourage women to go for it. Um, I think many women are happy to be in a background role uh, for a whole host of reasons. Um, they don't like the intrusion of their privacy. There's challenges around childcare. Um, I think that they say there are five C's as to why women don't get involved in politics. There's cash, there's childcare, there's candidate selection, there's culture and there's confidence. And I would put the last one very high. Um, I have come to the conclusion that women very often lack confidence in their abilities. They say if a man can tick six out of the ten boxes for a job, he'll go for it. But if a woman can't tick at least nine and maybe the ten, she won't even put her hat in the ring. And that is a cultural difference that would change over time. But the changing of that um, is down to role modelling and to networking um, and to encouragement. Um, I used to have a, a capacity to identify what I call people with the X factor. Now, it's, it's the capacity to get elected and it varies enormously. Just look at the array of people in the doll, and they, they're very different. And in different places, different people can be elected. Um, but I remember meeting Liz O'Donnell one night at a conf after a conference at a conference dinner uh, on the environment many, many years ago, probably 1989-90. And she was very interested in politics and I said to her, what, what about getting involved? And she immediately said, no, it's not for me, I know nothing about it. And she turned out to be a fantastic politician, absolutely fantastic. But it was just a question of somebody putting it on her agenda and encouraging her. And that's the story with so many other women. And I think women in the media, that this Bally Bunyan event has to be about putting um, the agenda uh, to women have something to uh, to women who have something to offer, and I would love to see more younger people, perhaps students, Mary Dundon students uh, of of journalism, uh, students of politics, uh, coming here in future years. And I'd love to think that this venue would be too small for the Ballybunion event; that we would have to get other larger venues in the area because it's a place where people can come, they can learn, they can meet, they can talk, and they can they realise 
that the women that have succeeded are ordinary women like themselves. There's nothing extraordinary about them, um, with the exception perhaps of Miriam O'Callaghan with eight children and a full-time job. Um, and I think that is quite extraordinary. Um, um, and it's fantastic that Miriam has given of her time to be here the whole weekend. She did send her husband Stephen off on a 100k cycle yesterday. <laughs> he probably needs to do that to keep up with her. Uh, uh, no spitting for you, Stephen, you have to move on. Uh, but no, Miriam has been here every year. This is my second year and I have to say I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, the atmosphere, the friendship, it's a terrific tribute to Mary Cummins. Probably wouldn't have happened without her. Joan, I, I suspect that that put the, the seed in your head and, their, and her family. And it's great to see them here. And it's lovely to be remembered, um, as Mary Cummins is, by her community. That was such an important part of her life. By the people she worked with, like Olivia, uh, Connor Brady was here, and, and, and many others. Um, but I think the next part of this journey, if you were to reflect on the four years, the next part of this journey has to be about the future. Uh, and that's far more important. And Edward Kennedy once said, not many of us have the capacity to bend the course of history, but each of us can do small things, and it's the sum total of the small things that makes up the history of our generation. And Joan, what you're doing may seem like a small thing, but I have no doubt it's going to inspire and encourage and motivate um, women in the media and women in politics and beyond politics, women in sport, uh, recently, the uh, Institute of Engineers appointed a woman CEO, Caroline Spillane. She didn't get the job because she was a woman. She got it because she was the best. Uh, women in science and engineering. And there are so many uh, women in business. I think it's important to focus on the agenda of how do we achieve greater equality, better decision making. Um, decision making is better when you have a diverse group of people making the decisions. And if you have in any society, if you have a large segment of that society excluded from the decision making, then it's not as objective or as balanced as it could be. Um, and, and that's the reason why it's important to have women and men make the decisions. I got into politics because of a man, a cork man, Jack Lynch. It wasn't on my agenda. Uh, at that time, you couldn't even consider a political career if you didn't come from a political family, a uh, woman or man, but particularly as a woman. Um, <coughs> And many other people got on the rung of the ladder because of men. So we must remember that we're working with men, not against men. It's not women or men, it's women and men uh, working together in, in, in so many walks of life. So ladies and gentlemen, in this graveyard slot uh, that I've been allocated, <laughs> uh, I, I, I took it so seriously, I went to bed after that enormous dinner last night. It was even big by my standards, Joan. And the only time I ever witnessed any discrimination, and I think I said this here last year, was in 1976 when I became auditor of the Debating Society in Trinity. And there was a long tradition that you could join what was then called the University Club. Um, it's now called the Kildare Street and University Club. And the big advantage to joining was that every Wednesday before the debate you could go and have dinner with the guests. And even in 1976 I could have done without the dinners, but I wanted to join. And I applied for membership and my membership was refused. And when I inquired if it was because I was a woman, I was told no, it was because I wasn't a man. <laughs> so uh, I could honestly say I never witnessed any other form of discrimination again. Um, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed my life in politics. I learned a lot. I learned a lot this weekend, particularly about the social media. And I'm so happy I got out before it really took root in the political world. Because it's not the offensive things that are said about you that offend you. They say everything. You're having somebody's, from having somebody's baby to all kinds of things. Anyway, I won't even go into that. I did say I didn't want to make a story, or I did want to make a story of a different kind. Um, but it really affects your family and your friends. And my mother used to get so upset. She once got a call telling her I'd been killed in the Nace Road during one of the leadership coups. And you can imagine when I got home, the state she was in. So it's the people around you, your loved ones, that are really get affected when awful things are said about you. Uh, and nowadays, anybody anonymously can say whatever they like about whoever they like without um, even bothering about the consequences for that individual or their family. And I just think we do need controls. And I was delighted to hear Neve Sweeney talk about that because I think the whole governance of the social media is a challenge for our society that needs to be addressed. We cannot have uh, these inappropriate and irresponsible 
um, dangerous things being said about individuals um, and nobody taking responsibility for that. So ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to close the fourth annual um, Women in the Media in Bally Bun Bunyan. And again, can I just say to you, Joan, you're a, a true inspiration. She didn't draw breath all weekend. Every time I saw her, she was doing some other job. It's been a fantastic weekend. Not just the, 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 um, the talks and the debate and the, um, the camaraderie and the networking, but the fun. And I'm really sorry to have missed the wonderful music last night. And I know it's worth coming here every Saturday night. It's not just for just during this weekend. So ladies and gentlemen, can I wish you all a safe journey home. I want to acknowledge the role that Mary Dundon played in trying to get so many uh, in getting so many of the speakers. And we we disappointingly lost uh, Noreen O'Sullivan. I'd be quite certain she'll be on for next year because she did have to go away. Um, and we lost others because of the formation of the government. But Mary Dundon's role in getting speakers has to be acknowledged. She she's the one that got me to come last year. Thank you very much.